Reverend Pye, I want to ask you sort of a niche question, in, in which we're all uh, we're all niched into what's happening in our individual states, as you would expect. But um, I'm concerned about uh, the uh, Commission's Mobility Fund in terms of the topography of a state such as ours. As you know, and many of you have been to West Virginia, we have a lot of hills and valleys, and it's difficult to it's a it's a lot more difficult to put service. Uh, in than it would be, say, in Kansas, where it's flatter and easier. So um, it may make the deployment of the service more more expensive and time consuming for providers and could and could potentially drive them to use their mobility fund resources in different locations. So I want the assurance that locations that are currently eligible and location and may become eligible through the challenge process are adequately funded by a formula that's adopted that takes topography into consideration. I appreciate the question, Senator. Your topography is much more complex than my home states, and so that's part of the reason why we've included analysis of terrain, for example, to make sure that we take account of uh, that unique situation. Appreciate that in response uh, to our request. Um, Commissioner Carr, thank you for coming to our, uh, we have our Senate broadband, uh, Rural Broadband Caucus. We've talked a lot about uh, the deployment of um, telehealth and uh, the things that uh, we can see uh, how advantageous that will, will be to many of us in rural areas and really across the country. Um, what, what's the next step here in terms of um, making sure we're deploying this in the telehealth area as accurately as we should be? Thanks for the question, Senator. We're pursuing sort of two tracks at the Commission. On the one hand, we've long been supporting broadband deployment to connected brick and mortar healthcare facilities. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've increased the funding on that portion. What we've just voted on earlier this month is to start the process of setting up a new program that would focus on a slightly different issue, which is how do we make sure that that connected care can stay with patients when they leave the facility, whether it's on their iPhone mm -hmm. or on a tablet. That administrative process is running its course right now. We're taking comment, and my hope would be that we could stand that up as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a point of clarification, this is for anybody. When people say robocalls, and we we all don't like them. Um, is, does this include the spoofing call that you get? So is a robocall either somebody who robocalls you or somebody using a fake number to entice you to pick up the phone? Do you consider that a robocall as well? Yes, Senator. Spoofing is perhaps the most pernicious of those because it mimics both the area code and sometimes even the prefix to make it appear as if a call is coming from your neighborhood when, in fact, it could be coming from another continent. I know. I, I know. And, uh, <laughs> and they also get the numbers lined up so you might think it's your mother calling and, oh, oh and, and, and then, no, it's, it's, I need a student loan is what I need. Um, so anyway, uh, Commissioner Rosenworcel, uh, thank you for coming to our uh, rural Broadband Caucus. I've joined on a letter with Senators King and House Representatives McKinley and Welch to the Department of Education to fully complete the research that Congress has requested in the Every Child Suc Student Succeeds Act to develop strategies in order to close this homework gap. I was just at the opening of a brand new middle school in northern West Virginia, Brook Middle School. Each one of those children in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade will have a Chromebook. The technology I've learned is it's it's not, we've gone beyond whiteboards now. We're into <laughs> interactive smart uh, TVs in every classroom. It's fascinating to watch. How are we going to be assured that when they take the Chromebook home with them, they're going to be able to um, uh, complete their assignment? Or, uh, you know, this to me is the big challenge, I think, for, for areas, especially when we talk about the population that can't afford to actually mm -hmm. purchase a Chromebook uh, or whatever they would have, an iPad or whatever. It's just um, they're going to have this. Can they use it? Yeah. Thank you, Senator, for your work on this. According to the Senate Joint Economic Committee, there are 12 million students in this country who do not have broadband at home and can't get their homework done. I mean, it's the cruelest part of the digital divide. We have got to fix it. Right. There are some measures that can help, more Wi-Fi in more places, more low-cost broadband plans. Senator Udall and Senator Gardner have a bill to help put Wi-Fi on buses. And then I also think we have to explore how we can use the 2.5 gigahertz band, which has long been used for education purposes to create a new incentive auction structure so that perhaps we can fund a program for wireless hotspots for those students to mm -hmm. take home with their Chromebooks because mm -hmm. every child needs to be able to do their homework and no child should be left offline. Right. Does anybody else have any comments on that, on the education aspect of this? 
I would just offer two uh, quick uh, points. I think uh, Senate Commissioner Rosenworcel is exactly right that EBS holds particular promise. I met on Monday, or Tuesday rather, with uh, Northern Michigan University that's using some of that spectrum in an innovative way to supply internet access to places in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan that otherwise wouldn't have service. And we also want to make sure that we promote uh, as much uh, of these kinds of reforms as public telehealth, e-rate, all the rest of it. These are critical tools, I think, for these rural communities. Right. To Thank use. you all. Thank you for your service. Thank you.